about him and to Amen. exalt him and to share with you the things that he's given me to share today. Amen. And it's something that I do when we have prayer here at the Hope yes. um, before our services. And that is, I like to uh, read the scripture or talk about praise and worship. Thank so you, in your hearts, just join with me. Amen. Because one of the things that it does is sets the atmosphere. Amen. It sets the atmosphere for the Lord. And one, one of the scriptures says it is, the Lord is far above all principalities, powers, mights, yes. and dominion. His name is far above every name that is named, not only in this world, but in that which is to come. Yes. The Lord is the great I am that I am, for he is everything that I need. Yes. I shall bring an offering of sacrifice and praise unto the Lord continually. And the fruit of my lips shall forever give him praise and thanksgiving. I shall give unto the Lord all the glory due unto his name. And I shall bring an offering and sacrifice before him of worship and praise. And the beauty of holiness, both riches and honor come from the Lord. He reigns over all. In his hands is all power and might. Hallelujah. He has the power to make men great and to give strength unto all. The Lord has brought me with the price of his own blood. Therefore, I shall glorify the Lord in my body, in my spirit, which is the Lord. Yes. Jesus Christ is the King of all kings, yes. and he is the Lord of all lords, and we honor him this morning. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. He is the great bread of life. Yes. Hallelujah. Unto my soul, the mercies of the Lord never cease. For they are new and renewed for us every morning. Great is the faithfulness Hallelujah. of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Great is your faithfulness, Lord. Great. And we can go on and on and on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Talking about the Lord and talking about his greatness. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I can truly say that the hope is a place of empowerment. It's truly, truly an empowerment zone. Yes. And I thank God for being here at the Hope. Hallelujah. I thank God for Pastor Mark. I thank God for all of my sisters and brothers in the Lord. Amen. I thank him Amen. how he honored the Lord and how he, he just dove into this unique ministry that the Lord has given him. Um, Pastor Mark is, uh, he's one of my oldest friends. He's my younger brother and he's my pastor and i can say this morning that the lord and him have been working on me for a long time <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> where of <awesome>. i'm glad <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> but i do thank and praise god for him uh, exactly. how he encourages us to do what god has called us to do Amen. and so we just give Amen. honor and praise and Amen. thanksgiving for that Amen. and today i want to talk to you Good. about prayer um, you, I, a lot of you know that prayer and intercessory prayer is my heartbeat. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the assignment and it's the thing that the Lord has burned in my heart. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk about that this morning. And I want to talk about the power that we have in prayer through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. The power that we have in prayer through Christ Jesus. Yes. My purpose today is to awaken the knowledge of of God being on the inside of us. Oh, what we need yeah. today, I want us to be more conscious of God inside of us. Amen. And as I was sitting there, I was thinking uh, the scripture that talks about us worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Yeah. You want to worship him in spirit and in truth, worship him from the inside out. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank That's you, good. Jesus. So I don't simply want to impart the word today, but I want to uh, um Stimulate us, stimulate us, us and those um, that are on Facebook, and each of those that have a, a desire and a heart to pray. And but we want to pray the interests of God. Yeah. And when we recognize that He is on the inside of us, then we pray His will in the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And you know it's a blessing that that He placed us here in this here United States. Yes. That in this dispensation, yes. it is. Tremendous right. that we are yeah. here in doing Amen. this time. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he wants us to use that. He did it for a purpose. Right. The scripture says we have assurance of salvation, adoption, grace, spirit filled life, and eternal glory as we are in Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Yeah. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Christ Amen. himself. Uh -huh. Live it on the inside of me. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. I live by faith of the God, of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And that's found in Galatians 2 and 20. Right. John 14, 16 through 17 says, Jesus said, 
I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth. You remember I just said a few minutes ago, if you want to worship him in spirit and truth, worship him from the inside. Yeah, and we appreciate right. the fact that he's omnipresent. That's he's right. everywhere. He's the very air we breathe. Yeah, Hallelujah. Right. But the greater accomplishment of, of who he called us to be will be when we, we recognize that he's on the inside of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the scripture says that he may be with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, for it beholdeth him not, neither knoweth him. Ye know him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ye know him. Yes. We know him. I know him. For he abideth with you and shall be in you. Hallelujah. Jesus. When we get a hold to that revelation, we will do exploits in the Lord. Amen. We really will do what Amen. he's called us to do. Yes, yes, Hallelujah. Yes. No matter what stage we are in, in our walk with the Lord. You may be a baby Christian. You may have been, may have been saved for 40 years. You may have been in the way for 40 years. <laughs> but we have to remember our purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and it talks about that in Ephesians. We are to never lose sight on why we are here on the earth. Praise God. Not to mention we're in the free world. We're in the, in, uh, in the United States. We are here where we can stand on a corner and hold our Bible and proclaim Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. And our goal is to participate in God's redemptive plan, not just here in Rahway, not just in the hope, but in the world. Amen. And I believe what God wants to do with me this morning is stretch us. To, to, to have a global vision. Amen. Because Amen. we can stand here in Rahway and, and, and bind up the enemy in Syria. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. I read somewhere, if we embrace purpose, we gain power. Say that with me. If I embrace purpose, I gain power. If I embrace purpose, Purpose, I, purpose. I, gain I gain power. Our motive should be to fit into God's plan. Uh, as I started to say before, we leave prayer here at the Hope, an hour of prayer before our service start. One of the first things that we say when we come in this room and begin to pray mm -hmm. is, God, we come here to fit in your plan. Yes. Right. We right. didn't come in here with our agenda. Yeah. The right. word tells us that he planned our days, he fashioned our days for us, before we were even formed in our mother's womb. Amen. So surely when we come in here to pray, yeah. or whatever it is we come to do, yeah. he already planned it. Yeah. Our yeah. goal, our motive should be to fit into that plan. Amen. Every morning yeah, when we so wake good. up, That's when right. we're driving to work, when whatever it is we're doing, we should be conscious, cognizant of the fact that God planned this day for me, and I want to do what he planned for me to do. I want to fit in his plan. Because, you know, we have a will, and we can be outside of God's will. We can come to church and do all of the religious rituals. But I thank God for the hope. Hallelujah. I thank God that we don't come here out of religious ritual. We come here to fulfill the purpose yes. that God has for us here. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Amen. So good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And we must remember that he is in us. Hallelujah. We have to know him. That's what the word means when it says to know him. When we know him, we connect with him that's on the inside of us. And we need to be God inside minded. And it is through him that we pray to him. That's good. Right. And when we realize and practice the fact that he's on the inside of us, we will pray to him through him. Is not, could not be the perfect, that be the perfect prayer. Hallelujah. Could not be that be the perfect will of God. Praying the perfect will of God, not just for our four and no more. That's right. Hallelujah. I believe that if you're under the sound of my voice this morning, you are called to a, a, a deeper and a higher calling of prayer, a higher calling of recognizing and realizing who you are. You are awesome and you are great. Why? Because he lives on the inside of you. Do you all get that? The very God of the universe. The almighty God himself. That's so good. The God Amen. that created the earth. He threw the stars in the sky. Yes. Put the sun in the sky. Yes. He created man. Yes. Lives on the inside of you. Amen. 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 He thought enough of Amazing. you to live, to take up a bold. 
Mm. In you, but it was for a purpose. Right. Jesus had a purpose, and each of us have a purpose. Right. And it all works together with the Lord and, and, and fulfilling His will. Hallelujah. You, no Amen. more flipping around. Amen. You know, no more flipping around. He's calling us. For, we can look around us and see that there's a need. Yes. Amen. And we can continue with, with religious ritual because we go to church and because. We pray, and you know, we can continue with that if we want to. He will allow us to, but he's calling us to a higher call. Right. He's calling right. us to a, he right. wants to use us. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank, you, yes. Thank you, Jesus. So no more flapping and flipping around. No and this not to minimize what we do of who we are. Because we are mothers, we are fathers, we are aunties, you know. We go to work, we have jobs. Hallelujah. We are teachers, we are pastors, we are evangelists. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Carpenters, get that? Carpenters, hallelujah. Truck drivers, reporters. But our greater call is that is, is that a prayer. Right. It keeps us in relationship with our Father. Without it, we will not fulfill our plan. Now, I know we've been praying. We've been praying. We've been praying. But I'm talking about a deeper call yes. prayer. I'm talking about that connecting with God and that prayer that will change atmospheres, mm -hmm. that will arrest those principalities that rest yes. over Hallelujah. cities yes. and over yes. communities. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I know that I'm an influential person. Uh -huh. I am. All of us are influential. Amen. We are. We influence our children. We influence... Uh, our co-workers, you know, yes. we influence the people and we just are influential yes. because we are children of God. But do you know, I realize that our greatest influence is in our prayer closet. Come on. That is our greatest influence. So Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm going to show it to you in a few minutes. That's good. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be on assignment to pray for the youth. Hallelujah. You may be on assignment to pray for any and everything that God puts on your heart. Yes. One of my dearest friends, Easter Frazier, mm -hmm. uh, the Lord sent her and a team mm -hmm. all the way to Italy to pray. And you might say, now, I know that there are Christians, that there are children of God in Italy, so why would he do that? One of the most things that I love about the Lord is that he's sovereign. Yes. And one of the things that I taught my children is that you fit into the plan of God. You know, he's sovereign. He's sovereign. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So one of the things that I taught them is that you, God is sovereign, so you fit into his will. No, you may not like everything that you have to do or everything that he's done, but recognize and appreciate the fact that he is God yes. and we fit into his plan. So I want to talk about Amos. And you know, there are, are, are anointings in this room and those under the sound of my voice um, that have that Moses anointing on them, that Amos anointing on them. Mm -hmm. The anointing doesn't change. That's one thing about the anointing. It does not change because the anointing is of God. Right. The true anointing is of God. And the same things that they did, mm -hmm. we can do. That's right. And he's called us to do in this generation. Right. And I just want to talk a little bit about a few of them. Um, that really stuck out to me. Um, Amos must have felt overwhelmed at times, you know. And sometimes when we look at the news, we feel overwhelmed yes. with the things that are going on. That's right. And we may feel like there's no point in me praying. That is too big. That's but right. we must remember that we pray the prayer and God does the manifesting. Does Amen. We pray that prayer. We connect Amen. with the God on the inside of us Amen. and have faith that he will manifest what we pray. Right. Because That's he good. does not lie. He cannot lie. Amen. So just yeah. like Amos was overwhelmed when he saw things going on, we are overwhelmed sometimes today. And God had threatened to annihilate Israel. He had already warned the people of the judgment of God. Uh, Amos had already warned them. And now this warning that he had sent out to them was upon them. Here he was. And the scripture says, Thus the Lord God showed me, this is Amos talking, Behold, he formed locust swarms at the beginning of the late crop. Indeed, it was the late crop after the king's mowing. And so it was, when they had finished eating the grass of the land, that I said. So he, what's happening here is Amos 
saw this vision from the Lord, or, or the Lord had shown him what he was going to do because he was tired of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And Amos said, and this is what we can do when we see things that's going on that should not be going on. on. Amos said, O oh Lord God, forgive, I pray, all oh, that Jacob may stand, for he is small. That's, that's simply what he said to the Lord. So the Lord relented concerning, concerning this. It shall not be, said the Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. We have that same power on the inside of us today. Mm. So that was the locust. Then another time, Amos saw a vision of fire. Thus, the Lord God showed me, behold, the Lord God called for conflict by fire, and it consumed the great deep and devoured the territory. Then I said, this is Amos, then I said, oh Lord God, cease, I pray. Cease, I pray. Hallelujah. All yes. oh, that Jacob may stand, for he is small. What Amos was saying was, you know, Lord, they sinned, they did wrong, but, but you know, give them a break, Lord. So the Lord relented concerning this. Wow. This is this also shall not be, said the Lord God. Mm -hmm. What could Amos do but pray? Yeah. When you look at the youth of today and some yes. of them that are going down the wrong road, yes. when you hear of the sex trafficking, yes. when you hear of another school shooting, Come on. hallelujah, Come on. when you hear of a nation uh, where your sisters and brothers cannot, if they mention the name of Jesus, will yes. be killed. Yes. When you hear those things, right. hallelujah. Right. What do you do? Yeah. You do what Amos did and you pray. Yeah. And we hear yeah. a lot about the end times. This is the end times. We're in, yes, we are in the end times. But I'm going to show you in God's word, even though there were some prophecies, because of the prayers of his people, because they realized who God was, and they went to him, he had mercy. Come on. We can pray to God. Yeah. We have the same mandate yeah. on us that Jeremiah had. And he's given us the same power. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. To steal the enemy. He's yeah. given yeah. us that same yeah. power. Yeah. The yeah. only yeah. thing that's stopping it is us realizing it Come and on. moving in it so and doing it. Yes. I'm talking about prayer. I'm talking about intercessory prayer. I'm talking about power. Yeah. The power of God. I'm talking about us. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 and, and the mercy of God. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. My, my husband and I teach a Bible study. And one of the main things that we teach the seniors, there's a Bible study of senior citizens. One of the main things that we always say to them, when you get up and hang your feet on the side of the bed, when you get your cup of tea and you sit at the table, you can pray. Come on. You can pray. You can pray for the youth. Yes. Is the youth on your heart? Then pray. Yes. You know, you might be in that winter season of your life. Mm. And you know, sometimes we think that prayer, we have to be in this atmosphere, you know, waving our hands and, you know, and we have to feel the presence of God. No. Right. He is on the inside of us Come whether on. we feel him or yes. not. Amen. The power Amen. is in the in the word and in the faith. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. The only thing that Amos could do was to beg God for his mercy and to forgive. Was to ask God and God heard him and he forgave. Hallelujah. He prayed for the people with honesty and compassion. That's the key right there. Thank you, Lord. When you're looking at TV or you hear something and you're moved by compassion. Yes. Who, yes. who gives you that compassion? Right. Yes. Who gives it to you? Amen. So the fact that he's on the inside of you, yes. take it to him. Talk to him That's about it. Right. And I guarantee you he will move on your behalf because his word does not lie. Amen. He didn't love Amos any more than he loved you or I. Right. And we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Yes. If those men and women had that kind of power and that kind of relationship and that kind of influence with God, how much more do we have? Come on. Come on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Prayer changes things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Through Amos, we see how powerful our prayers can be on behalf of others. Sometimes we have no idea what kind of changes we orchestrate of what kind of pain we spare by what we do through prayer. And you know, um, the sister said last night when she was preaching, uh, the opposition comes. 
Amos had opposition, and I'm going to tell you, some terrible things happened even after Amos asked God to spare those people. But um, the priests came against Amos and went to the, to the king and uh, was talking about Amos and his prophecy. And Amos said, look, <laughs> he said, I'm just a, sh uh, 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 he, he was a sheep shearer. Uh -huh. You know, he, he sheared the sheep. Right. And he said, and I was doing what I was doing. I was doing what I do. And God showed me the vision. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amos was just doing what he do. Right. And God showed him the vision. Right. And when God shows us a vision like he will, we have to do something with it. Yes. And that's my purpose this morning is to stir you up and stimulate us. I know some of us are doing it already, but go deeper. Yeah. Go higher. Go wider. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then I want to talk about Moses a little bit. That's so good. Lord. We all know that Moses interceded for the people. And I'm going to read this uh, real quick. It says, and this is found in Numbers 14. It says, but Moses said to the Lord, then the Egyptians will hear of it. For you brought up this people in your might from among them. And they will tell the inhabitants of the land. They have heard that you, O Lord, are in the midst of this people. For you, O Lord, are seen face to face. And your cloud stands over them. And you go before them in a pillar of cloud in a pillar of cloud by day, and in a pillar of fire by night. Now, if you kill this people as one man, then the nations who have heard your fame will say, it is because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land that he swore to give to them, that he has killed them in the wilderness. And now, please, let the power of the Lord be great as you have promised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Look, I love Abraham. I love Moses because these people had a relationship with God. Right. Just like, you see how he talked to God? Yes. You know, he said, what about your fame? If you go and kill them because you're upset with them, what about your word? What about your fame? Think about Hezekiah, how he, the prophet. This is yes. what I'm telling you. I, I think God wants us to open our eyes. Yes. How we can change things through prayer. Amen. Don't get so caught up in the last days. You know, it's okay for us to recognize because it's Bible and it's word and it's true. But we have the power <coughs> to go to God and change things by his mercy. Yeah. Why? Because he lives on the inside of us. Thank you, Father. Thank he you. lives. He yeah. himself lives on the inside of us. Yeah. Pull on his mercy. Go to him on behalf of the people like Amos and like Moses did. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. And now, please let the power of the Lord be great as you have promised, saying, The Lord is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, forgiving iniquity and transgression. But he will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. Please pardon the iniquity of this people. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Please. We can go to God in the name of Jesus Christ and say, please pardon this people. We can pray about our administration and say, Father God, please, please, you see what it is doing to the people. Please, Father, change the hearts of those men and believe that. And forget about all the talking about it and all of that other nonsense that, that's going on that we see. It's here. It's here. Pray, please, Father. Change, change the hearts. You said in your word that the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. And you turn it the way you choose, Father. So, Father, I'm asking you to fix it, you to change. I'm asking you to send a laborer. You to plant your people there. To give them the wisdom of God. Talk to him. Talk to him. That's what I said before. Prayer is not just us being in church and praying and, you know, and talking, you know, and, uh, uh. Prayer is talking to God. It can't be that. Yes. And it's that a lot of the times. But a lot of the times it's just talking to him and reasoning yes. with him. Come on, Hallelujah. Yes. That's so good. The Lord spoke. This is another part of, of Moses. Though. You know, Moses was always in the face of God on behalf of the people. Yes. He was an intercessor. Amos was an intercessor. The Lord spoke Father to me saying, I have seen this people and indeed it is a stubborn people. Let me alone that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven. And I will make of you a nation mightier and greater, greater than they. That's found in Deuteronomy 9, 13 and 14. This verse is a review statement made by Moses before Israel. 
contextually, Moses was recounting how God had almost destroyed them. But through Moses' intercession, the Lord relented. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what your title is. It doesn't matter what our education is. It doesn't matter our, our status. What matters is the fact that God lives on the inside of us. And he wants to use us to bring peace and tranquility. To change nations. Not just our families. Not He wants to use us. Because there's no distance in prayer. Because what? We can go around the world through prayer. Hallelujah. Through prayer. It's you, all of us, the ones on Facebook that's hearing me. Yes. Us. We can do that. Come on. Not because of who we are, not because of anything great about us, but because God lives on the inside of us. Hallelujah. 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 But through Moses' intercession, the Lord relented. Hallelujah. How many times have we looked at TV and saw some bad news and cried? This yeah. just brought us to tears. Right. I remember yeah. all the way back to Oklahoma bombing. Yes. You know, when, the, when I saw them carry those children out of that building, you know, I was moved to tears. Who wasn't moved to tears just recently yes. with this guy that shot all of these children? Right. Yeah. Amen. 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 Don't just be moved by tears. You have the living, true and living God, the all-powerful God on the inside of you. Do something about it. Hallelujah. And lastly, I want to talk about Nehemiah. Nehemiah. <laughs> I was like, she just talking about Nehemiah tonight. When he heard of the walls of Jericho lay in waste and that the people lived in distress and reproach, he began to weep, fast, and pray. What moves you to weep Fast and pray. You know, you're not going to be able to pray about everything in this human body. Mm -hmm. But what moves you? Yes. Moses was an intercessor. He intercessed. He was brought to compassion. He stood in the gap between God and those people. Amos was moved. Mm -hmm. You know, and he, he saw what God was going to do to them. And he asked God, please, yeah. please don't do that, Lord. No. Jesus. You know, Nehemiah saw the city in ruins. And he went to prayer and fasting. Yeah. Hallelujah. Which we <coughs> are so often called to do at hope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he began to Hallelujah. weep. What makes you weep? What moves your heart? Yeah. That is the very thing that you can take to God and he changed and he do something about it. And Nehemiah prays for his people and I'm almost done. Well, before I even get to that, God gave Nehemiah the vision what to do. Now, when you are moved with compassion and you're moved by something, and, and you begin to pray about that thing and take it to God, uh, he'll give you a strategy. He'll give you how to pray. Come on. You know, he may give you what to do. It may not just be prayer, it may be to do something. Because I love, love, love the story of Nehemiah. God gave him a strategy. Right. He not only gave him a strategy, he paved the way. Yeah. If he gives you a strategy for something, the way is already made. Yeah. It doesn't mean the opposition is not going to come, right. but you have to know in your spirit, man, where God lives, that the way is already made. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So God gave him the vision on what to do. Intercession must always be a primary role, role for whoever or whatever you are. Whether you're a mother, a teacher, a doctor, uh, whatever you are, student, uh -huh. yeah. intercessory prayer or prayer period has to be your primary role. Yes. It, it's what connects your relationship with God. That's right. It's what connects us. That's right. You know, hallelujah. That's right. um, I have a daughter in Arizona, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we're not in the same space. But she's, we're connected because she's my daughter. That's right. Now, my daughters that are here, we talk on the phone almost every day. You know, you, you get what I'm trying to say is yeah. we have, we, we're right. We're, we're, I'm in relationship with, with her, but I'm, I'm, I'm we, you know, we have this working thing going on because they are in my space. Right. Because we're right here. I don't see her all the time. And that's the same way it is with us. Amen. God has children all over the planet. That's right. All over the planet. But those of us that stay in contact with him, so those of us that, you know, that, that, that inch up on him, you know what I'm saying, that, that nudges up to him and say, Lord, look, I see what's going on here, and I know you can change this yeah. because you have all power, Lord. Fix it. Yeah. Fix that's it, Lord. Yeah. Nehemiah prays for his people. The word of Nehemiah um, says, it came to pass in the month of uh, Chilsleth, in the 20th year that I was in Shuhan, the citadel, 
and, and Hanani, one of my brethren, came with me from Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the captivity, concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, the survivors are left from captivity in the province, in the province, and are there in great distress, distress and reproach. Sometimes you have to inquire about things. That's what happened with, with Nehemiah. He was inquiring, what's going on? Yeah. What's going on? And they were telling him that those people were in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are burned with fire. And uh, for sake of time, I'm just not going to read the rest of this, but he was moved. Mm -hmm. He was moved. And Nehemiah prayed to the Lord God of heaven, O oh, great and awesome God, yeah. you yeah. who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments. Please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant uh -huh. which I pray before you now. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, I tell you, when my children were small, they used to come to me and say, especially one of them, they would come to say, but you promised. Everything is like, you know what I'm saying? No, you can't do that. No, but you promised. You know what I'm saying? I know I didn't promise that. <laughs> But they knew, yes. they knew that when they said, I promise, mama, you promise, you know I'm trying to keep your promise. Yes, huh. yes. We can take it to the Lord and Come say, well, God, you promise. Right. You promise that you hear me. You promise yes. that, that if I pray, you would hear me and you would answer. Yes. That's why you think this is, we've been in the last days so long. <laughs> because somewhere, somebody has been praying to the Lord. Yeah, I'm yeah. almost done. I'm almost done. Good. Peter said, true priority, I'm not going to read the rest of this because you get it. You get the gist uh -huh. of it. Peter said that true priorities are important. Prayer and the word. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. And prayer does three, three things. It internalizes the burden. When you see something, you have a burden. You have a burden for these youth. We have a, a burden for these youth. We should be praying for revival. Yes. Yes. These youth that have taken a stand, yes. I see something different. I don't know about you guys, but I see something. Uh -huh. And let's pray for revival. Because they have the strength about them. They just need Jesus. Amen. To just the Holy Spirit to guide them and make a difference. This could be one of those things that go down in history. Uh -huh. And we could be a part of it through our intercession. Yes. Let's pray and say, God, send, send a revival. Right. And just uh, get them saved. All these youth all over the country. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's taking a stand yeah. and walking out of class and not taking it anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can pray for a revival. And that's what we, I believe, we should be praying for a revival among them. So something can really be done. Yeah, yeah. It don't just be politics. It don't just be a drive. But it can be something that will make a difference. And will cause them to take their place in the kingdom of God. You want to see Jesus Christ usher back here. Let's, let's pray for this generation. Hallelujah. It insists that we quiet our hearts to receive from God. That's one of the things that prayer does. And it enables us to see what God wants us to do. Yes. Prayer, we hear it so often. It's not just talking to him, but it's listening to him. Because we're in relationship with him. He Amen. lives on the inside of us. Yes. Yes. You know, we have a relationship with him. Right. 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 And not that of a marriage relationship. Yes. You know, yeah. we, we, that of a lovemaking relationship. In that intimate place right. where nobody else comes in there, but just you and God. Come on. That's the place. That's the place where we want to be. Stand to your feet, please. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And let's ask God to take us to that place. No matter where we are, we can go deeper, higher, and wider. So, hallelujah. Let's just lift our voices together and just go before his throne. You know, press in. Yes. Press in. Yes. So we can make a difference. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord.